Making a teapot that is beautiful and cohesive and pours well is a good challenge for any potter. Hi, my name is Christy Knox and today I'm going to show you how I make hand-built teapots. I begin with a slab of clay and I use embossing plates that I've created of plant material. I roll the clay into the embossing plates and when the clay is released, my surface decoration is now complete. So I always start with the surface decoration and then build the pots from there. Whenever I'm connecting two pieces of clay, I always score the surface first and then slip it and I just use water to add the moisture. And then I will compress it. I've drawn the form in at the base because it will be the beginning of my belly. I add the bottom. And then I slowed this part down because I want you to see the tool I'm using. It's a thin bladed knife that I bent at a right angle. It's great because I use it so I can make a perpendicular cut on that bottom slab. And even if there's a big belly that hangs over the base, I can get underneath it. And then with a chamois, I'm going to compress and finish the foot. Now with a soft rib, I'll start bellying out the form by coaxing it from the inside. I've made the walls taller than I really want them to be because I find that being able to hold the top helps stabilize the form as I'm drawing out the belly. But now I can get rid of some of that extra clay and finish refining the shape. Here's the part I really like. So by card cutting some big darts out of both sides, preparing the seams, I can then drop that form down and reconnect it. That way I can change the shape pretty dramatically and quite quickly. And then with the use of a paddle, I'll compress the clay and refine the form even more. Now I know I just showed you this, but I'm gonna cut the form again. If I tried to do it all in one shot, it would be a big change in direction for the clay and for the pattern on the surface. So I found that I'm more successful if I do it in two steps. Now I'm just going to cut a rough opening in the top. So it will allow me to get my hand on the inside so I can support the form as I continue to refine the top part. And now the body of my teapot is finished. So onto the spout. I'll roll out a very thin sheet of clay this time and pattern it. And it's thinner than the body, partially because it has to curl dramatically. And the texture on the outside struggles with that. So I found that if I use a really thin sheet of clay and make sure the clay is really wet, I can get it to hold together as I'm curving it. When I'm combining two pieces of clay, I also often bevel the clay. And that way, once it's reconnected, the seam is the same thickness as the rest of the walls of the pot. And then I'll smooth the inside and compress and finish the seam on the outside and then I can curb the piece and start shaping it.
This is a great tool. You will see I use lots of templates for different things. And this is a template that I use not only for the finished opening in the body, but also to create a little shelf that will sit just inside of it for the teapot lid to sit on, as well as using it to do part of the construction for the lid. And it is the key for all three of those parts that need to fit together. I use an old X-Acto knife for my finish cut. I like it because it has a very thin blade. It's not so much that it's very sharp. There's just less resistance as I'm drawing it through the clay. Now on to the lid. Here's another template. The circle is just a little bit bigger in diameter than my oval opening. There is so much relationship between slab construction and fabric construction, uh, both using darts to create form and change direction. Only clay has the added advantage that it also stretches. So I'll draw those two parts of the dart together and finish the inside and the outside. Shape the pieces a little bit more as I go. Cut off some of the extra. And eventually, as I'm refining the lid, I'll also use a rasp, as well as that template I showed you to tell me exactly what the shape and how big it is. So here it is finished. I uh, put a flange on the inside of the lid to help seat it in the teapot. And you can see the little shelf I created on the inside of the opening that the lid will rest on. Lots of compression. I'll check several times and with that rasp, make tiny adjustments so that hopefully at the end it will fit well. I make lots and lots of coils in my work. Someday I'll do a demo just on making coils because there's lots of good tricks. But right now I'm making coils to make the finial for the top of the lid. And I want the finial to have a relationship to the rest of the teapot. So a little fiddlehead seems appropriate here. The trick always is how to get all the compression so it seats well without marring the form. And I check and I double check that it's straight. Using water on a piece of canvas is um, nice because you're adding a little bit of moisture as you're rolling your coil, because often your coil loses moisture and starts cracking. I'm gonna flatten that coil, add a little decoration, and the tool I'm using is just a, a painter's tool for faux finishing. And then I'll curl up the ends. and shape the handle. You can see the clay is really wet right now, but I'll give it the eventual curve that I want it to take, and then I'll just let it dry. So now the teapot and the handle are leather hard. It's important for both pieces to have the same moisture content because I wouldn't want one to dry and shrink more than the other after it's assembled. Slipped and scored, the handle goes on, making sure that the connections are sound, making sure that the handle is straight, add just a little bit more detail, check and double check.
and my teapot is done. I'll dry it slowly, which helps keep it from cracking. There you go. I hope this gave you some ideas and new tricks to play with. I think it's important to take good, healthy risks in your art and keep growing.